Hey everyone and welcome to another cartoon review from Weird Future. I'm the Cube and today I have my good friend Chris with me. What's up guys? So today we're going to be talking about the newest episode of Samurai Jack and for those of you who have seen it, it might, uh, you might have said it felt a little lackluster in my opinion, but that's just my opinion. Chris, if you want to give all yours before we start this up. <laughs> it was, uh, it was pretty awkward. It was uh, <laughs> an awkward episode. Let's, yeah. let's keep it at that. So, what ends up happening, essentially, is Jack and Ashi are making their way to defeat Aku, is what I'm guessing. I guess they're on their way, it's gonna be a long journey. And along the way, they start, uh, it starts with them base them in a kind of desert city, where Jack eats some funny food and turns his face into a fish. Not really a big problem, because eventually it goes away, but, uh, funny for the moment just watching him have a big kind of flounder instead of Jack's face, kind of meandering about. But what ends up happening is they get on this large, large camel with a with kind of a building on its back that transports people, and they get on to travel on it, and they get on it with many, many, many tiger men who have shirts that all carry letters on them, a singular letter, and they get jam packed into the back of this camel taxi, and. Um, Ashi and Jack are very are pushed very close together. Extremely close together. To the point where they're like starting to, to where their bodies are touching and then um she says that something's poking her and they and Jack's like, "Oh, I'm sorry." And it turns out to be a sword. And which that was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was really funny but really awkward at the same time. It was just like another use of that kind of adult swim kind of joke. Just like, yeah, you know, the adult humor implication, the impl his sword is stabbing her. Yeah. I, but, uh, so what ends up after that is, uh, they fight all these tiger men. He, Jack realizes that these tiger men are actually there to kill them, obviously. Like, but, why, why else would they be there? Exactly. I mean, the shirts pretty much spell it out. Samurai Jack must die. And uh, when when Jack uh, Jack and Ashi fight them all off, they begin to uh, they escape the camel. And when they escape it, they be they begin meandering about the desert, trying to find their way through it until a sandstorm hits. Yeah, and then when the sandstorm hits, they uh, they pretty much go to seek shelter away from the sandstorm, and uh, they end up into. Uh, seeing this uh hole in the wall or a hole in a mountain and i i believe they they it is a it is a mountain i believe and well, they uh what's up no well at the very beginning of the episode we see exactly what it is it's a it's a large space prison i think it was it was basically a large space cube that was knocked out of orbit by meteors and then hits earth in the desert where jack and ashi also happen to be Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that's right. I was wondering what that was. Which is, I, I didn't put the, uh, I didn't put the dots together until now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, I guess so. It's pretty much a, a prison ship, and uh, correct. Yeah. And um, they they enter this prison ship not knowing what it is, and uh, what what ends up happening is they uh, they start to explore it. Like, I mean, who wouldn't want to explore something that just was just there out of the blue, you know? Not to and mention trying to find cover from the sands. True, true. And um, they they end up walking for, mile, uh, for a quick bit, and that's when Ashi gets, uh, gets bitten by this bluish leech kind of thing. And uh, Jack ends up uh, cutting it in half, and apparently the leech is poisonous, because you see green seeping from where Ashi was bitten you see green like coming out from or spreading across from the her wound. leg yeah yeah jack has to suck the poison out and, uh that scene was a little like i don't know it just made me laugh watching him do it it, it, was, it was animated very funnily it was it was i was i was sitting there looking like watching the watching it on my computer just kind of with Hand in head and just like really, like oh man. Yeah. So uh, as the episode continues, the Jack manages to get all the poison out, and then they begin to see more and more of these little bug creatures, kind of like like leeches. 
and uh, all the leeches uh, begin chasing them through the throughout the uh, prison, and they get chased into a specific like kind of main room, like a main large prison chamber. Yeah. And uh... inside of it, the larvae form into like a giant earth cre like a giant creature made of in uh, made entirely out of larva. <laughs> it yeah, it, it kind of reminded me um from you know the those creatures in Dark Souls. Uh, that have the worms uh, on them. Like, oh yes, yes, and they, it, they, they they look humanoid, but they actually are like completely made out of worms. Yeah, that's it, what it reminded me of, and um, that it just I was like, oh, this is really interesting. I wonder what what they're gonna do with this, and um, it it didn't fail to disappoint. Uh, the they you see the worm or the uh, the leech. The, the Unity Leech um, start attacking Jack and Ashi, trying to get it, like, trying to make it its dinner or something like that. It's lunch. Have them for breakfast, supper, <laughs> something like something like that. Yeah. And then uh, Jack and Ashi manage to escape. Jack using his sword to cut through the floor, although I don't know why he doesn't do that to escape. I don't know why he didn't do that through a wall to leave, but I guess through the floor is fine. And uh, they make it to a armory where Jack sees a certain disc, like a, 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 a like a cylindrical disc that has a hologram attached to it. And hologram goes to explain that the worms or the larva are this alien prit, like alien species called Lazarus ninety two. And like right before Jack learns how to use the machine to beat them, Ashi blows a hole through a wall with one of the guns. And he loses his train of thought and doesn't see the fi and doesn't finish the recording. So he takes the disc with them, although not knowing how to use it. And Ashi has to defend him in a fight while he has to while he tries to like poke and prod at this little disc, trying to turn it on. Exactly. And then after a while, they take turns uh, trying to figure out how to use the disc. And um, it's from from that point on, it's just they're they're fighting this 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 thing trying to figure out how to use the disc and um they're they're like you know what let's continue fighting maybe we'll figure it out later and uh i think sometime in between you see jack become extremely awkward when uh ashi's fighting uh stark naked um, her clothes is torn asunder yeah. by the uh by the larva indeed and um we we see Jack is pretty like pretty nervous, which hasn't really I, I, I haven't really seen that in a while. He 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 hasn't tried like it hasn't been a problem for him to worry about modesty in a fight, and now it's now it's become a problem because Ashi Ashi doesn't realize this because she ha she didn't grow up in a place where it made any difference. But uh, you know, Jack Jack has sensibilities, so he uh, uses his robe to cover her up while they while they continue fighting. Yeah. And then um, they finally manage to figure out how how to activate the thing, the uh, the disc, and just just in the nick of time too, because at that time they're they're being overrun by Lazarus ninety two. Yeah, and, they're being swarmed and attacked. And they're both screaming and yelling and screaming and yelling. And then you see the the device activate and Lazarus ninety two dead and Jack and Ashi covered in. Uh, slime or brown goo. Yeah, it seems that the device or whatever it is not only killed the killed Lazarus, but uh, it also like burned the blood away. So in the entire scene, like you're watching Jack and Asha get electrocuted because they're also coated in like the in the Lazarus blood. So they they keep getting like shocked by it until like every single bit of the Lazarus ninety two is dead. And this scene goes on for quite a minute. There's like. It's like a whole minute or two of just straight that. It's a whole minute or two of just straight explosions from these little Lazarus bugs, leeches, things. Yeah, indeed. And uh, you, you you see them after a while, just kind of stare at each other for a brief second, and then uh, they quickly start making out. And uh, you you hear a, a song start uh, slowly playing, and. Uh, it that that song has has been stuck in my head for the whole day. 
Yeah, yeah. Everybody wants somebody. And right to... there is where we're gonna stop you to not get copyrighted. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, so that was the entirety of the episode. Uh, like, okay, so I just want to air my grievances early on, or just get it done and out of the way. So, the Jack and Ashi thing, I, I guess I should have saw it coming, but it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to understand that relationship at all because Jack is not only. Well, I, I'm assuming when he started the story, he was like 20 or 30. You know what I mean? He seems yeah. kind of not not up there in age, but he's 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 not a young dude. No, and then, no, he's definitely not. Yeah, and then he spent the last 50 years in the future seeing some pretty messed up stuff. So he's got, like, the equivalency of an 80-year-old mind in, like, a 20-year-old's body. And I don't think that would, like... I don't just... In my head, I don't think that would work in a relationship, but I guess for the sake of the show, that's what they're going for, that Jack is mentally stable and Ashi is mentally stable enough to have a relationship, even though neither of them have really... You know, like, have too much experience in it. In the past, in the past seasons, Jack has had, like, feelings and stuff. There was, there was an episode or two where he, do, he, he is approached by women. Indeed, and he's, yeah. he's, he's always been very, yet, yet again, modest. He's been very, like, honorable with the way he's treated them and stuff. He's never been, like, like, just Disrespectful. Crazy, yeah, disrespectful. So, in this episode, just seeing him become a nervous wreck around a woman is a little... It's a little weird, is all I'm trying to say. Yeah, it, it was it was kind of weird, but this this uh, this episode kind of reminded or now 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 that you mentioned you know Jack uh, has been like as an older man you know um, he, it it kind of reminds me uh, I don't know if any of you uh, listeners have uh, seen BoJack Horseman, um, where BoJack enters in a real relationship with a a person who's been in a coma for like. A very long time, and, and it's is 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 kind of like okay, like I there the person hasn't been in a relationship for like a very long time, and you know it, it kind of I felt like it kind of paralleled to like Jack and Ashi, even though those things are like two completely different things. No, it, it, I, I, like I see where you're coming on. from with it, though. Just that these two characters so oddly different. This one character who has no experience in it all, and then Bojack who has so much experience. It's ridiculous. It's, 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 it's like these two things coming together that are, are hard to understand. Exactly. And I, and I and I find it hard to understand for Jack and Ashi. I did like the idea that they were going to be either like master and student, or like I... father and daughter more because Jack is like mentally an old man. Yeah. But... Yeah. I, I kind of wish they went with that direction instead of them becoming lovers, you know? Yeah, but, you know, what can you do? What can you do? Tartakovsky, Mr. Gendy, uh, it's his decision, and uh, I, I won't fault him for it. Because, you know, how like, w when you got only ten episodes to tell a story, and they all have to connect to each other, and every other episode of Samurai Jack has hardly had to connect to each other, I don't blame him for taking routes like this just because he's trying to get every single like angle of jack out In, there before yeah. the show is over like his crazy side his happy side his sad side his loving side his you know his nervous side he's trying to get like you, he wants everybody to be able to get a, a holistic think, view of jack i think what he's trying to or what what gendy's trying to convey is uh that, that jack's human you know he's he's finally recovered from being crazy you know this is it's his uh is this Ashi's been the one who's been with him during that those low periods those high periods so I guess it does make sense for Gendy to do that with uh, Jack and Jack and Ashi and um we'll we'll see what what's to come in the next episode you know yeah yeah so I think that's about it I think that we've kind of covered what we felt about this episode I, I you know and. I, at the end of it all, I'm still gonna watch. I still think it's a great show, despite the decisions. I can't, I can't fault it for what it is. It, I, it's Samurai Jack, and I love it. So yeah, it's uh, we we don't. I mean, we can appreciate the show. I mean, but doesn't mean we have to like what some of the decisions are on there. You know? Exactly. Exactly. So I think that's about it. So this has been the Cube. This has been Chris. And this has been a cartoon review of Samurai Jack. We will talk to you later, guys. See you soon.